electromagnetic waves surround us 24-7 from our cell phones, our home wireless networks, department stores, the cell phone towers that are popping up everywhere, the Wi-Fi cafes, even our wireless baby monitors. And no one is, really knows the long-term effects on our DNA, especially on our kids. Well, my guest today, Camilla Reese, is here to demystify and enlighten us on the topic. Camilla is one of the foremost advocates for safer cell phone and wireless technologies and is committed to help raise awareness of the link between electromagnetic pollution and our health. She's working globally to educate the public, schools, businesses, politicians, doctors, and scientists about radiation risks. Camilla is an electromagnetic field consultant currently on the board of advisors of the International EMF Alliance. She founded the website electromagnetichealth.org and is coming out with her first research paper this year on EMF impact on the heart. Camilla co-authored the book Public Health SOS, The Shadow Side of the Wireless Revolution, and co-authored a report, Cell Phones and Brain Tumors, 15 Reasons for Concern. Most recently, she held a lengthy briefing on wireless hazards in Congress and also works behind the scenes with many activist, environmental, and social change organizations. Welcome to your supernatural life, Camilla. Great. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Beth. Fabulous. Well, I'd like you to help make our listeners aware of all the electromagnetic field pollution we're being bombarded with daily um, from radio frequencies, EMFs, ELFs, dirty electricity. Can you explain, you know, what's the distinction between these? Sure. Um, electromagnetic fields differ in the, um, the intensity of the frequency. And so down at one, the very low end of the spectrum, they're called low frequency. And at the higher end, they're called high frequency. So um, the, the low frequency fields at the low end of the spectrum are things like your everyday electric fields and magnetic fields. Um, and then as you go up the spectrum a little higher, you get into an intermediate range that's um, known as dirty electricity. Um, which is um, um, just a, a little different. And then when you get even higher, you get into the radio frequency end of the spectrum, of which microwave radiation is a subset. And uh, microwave radiation is the kind of electromagnetic field that is emitted from cell phones and wireless networks. And um, I say that with one caveat, which is that the phones also emit a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. And so one has to know about that as well. So there are multiple kinds of fields that we have to be aware of and learn how to measure and assess and figure out how to remediate. Uh -huh. Now, many people are becoming electrosensitive these days. I know that chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and other chronic pain syndromes can be caused by exposure to these fields. So what are some other symptoms and diseases that people can have that might be caused by things like their computers and printers and even wireless baby monitors, or living near a cell phone antenna, for example? Mm -hmm. Well, I like to think of this new problem as something that, as into two components. One is the short-term acute effects of these kinds of exposures, and then the longer-term effects from the chronic exposures. So in terms of the um, acute kinds of symptoms, there is increasing amount of research showing that when you live near a cell phone tower or antenna system, um, people get symptoms like excessive fatigue that they don't have elsewhere. They get sleep disturbances, headaches, um, irritability, difficulty in concentrating, memory problems, visual disruptions, um, skin irregularities, cardiovascular irregularities, um, dizziness, um, and so on. So those are um, there's a great study that I like to refer to by. Santini at all. It was done in 2001 in Spain that really lays out these kinds of symptoms that are the acute symptoms that people have. And the closer one is to the tower or the antenna, um, the, the greater the symptoms. Now, I just want to say that those symptoms sound very similar to uh, chemical toxin exposure as well. You know, people who are exposed to phthalates or, mm -hmm. you know, plastics get th these very same symptoms. Yes. Well, in a way, you think about it, all, all of these things are disrupting the regulation systems in the body. Mm -hmm. They're all throwing off of our nervous system, which is then impacting every cell in our body. So whether it's a, a chemical or an EMF or... or um, or, or even emotional stress. Um, all of these are disruptors to our being, and we, are, we have to think of ourselves as a system. We're electromagnetic beings, and so 
you know, people are especially vulnerable to the electromagnetic fields because we're electromagnetic. And then there's also some evidence that there's a there's some synergistic effects between the effects of chemicals and um, the electromagnetic fields. Mm-hmm. Now, w- some people seem to be more sensitive than others. You know, what sets people up for, for getting ill? Mm-hmm. Well, um, first, um, there, there are some things that definitely make some people more sensitive. But before I go to those, let me just tell you that there is research out of Sweden at the Karolinska Institute that shows that even though people may not be experiencing symptoms, that their cells are still experiencing um, changes, oh. such as inflammation mm-hmm. and increased stress proteins and um, increased mast cells. And so... Um, so just because somebody may not be experiencing symptoms now doesn't mean that they won't uh, with longer and, and more frequent exposures. And um, the um, uh, so to go back to your original question, the kinds of people that are going to be more vulnerable are people who have any kind of metal in their body, mm-hmm. and that would include everything from metal fillings of any kind, whether it's um, mercury, you know, mercury or gold or any kind of metal to people that have prostheses in their body, Oh. to um, there's a fellow here that, that is so sad. He has a back problem. They put a metal rod in his back, and the poor fellow cannot find a place to live where he can function. Oh, he's like a, he's like a, a metal rod for this, like a, like, like a lightning rod almost. That's right. Yeah. So we have to think about metal in our life in general, in oh. our bedrooms, in our mattresses, in our beds, in our furniture, uh-huh. in light of the fact that there's so much of this radiation around us. Even eyeglasses, I'm thinking. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that you mentioned that because the eyes are one of the most sensitive parts of the body to electromagnetic fields and that's actually very little known. And, um, yeah, so metal, I, I personally have mm. switched from metal glasses to plastic glasses. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. And what about jewelry? Do you still wear ju- metal jewelry? Um, yeah, I do a little bit. I'm not, su- I'm not so super sensitive right now. Mm-hmm. But going back to your question, um, the other kinds of things that can make people more sensitive is anybody that's got an infectious process going on in their body. So if you've got chronic infection, and um, microorganisms have been shown to excrete more neurotoxins into the body in the presence of electromagnetic fields. So what we're doing is if you have, you know, chronic Lyme disease or chronic other infections, dental infections, we are polluting our bodies to a greater degree, thus the need for everybody to be detoxifying themselves, a word that, you know, you, we probably never heard of 20 years ago, mm-hmm. you know. Our parents didn't grow up having to routinely detoxify their bodies, but that is um, increasingly necessary because of the EMF's role and, and the, the incidence of uh, chronic infection also being much higher. Now, you you had a, an infection, and that and also you were exposed to um, to EMFs from your neighbor's apartment. And is, is, can you t- talk a little bit about that? Is that how you became interested and aware of all this? Uh, yes, I'll yeah. tell you. Mm-hmm. I learned about this subject personally because I was living in San Francisco. I was really at a very good point in my life. I was starting a company. I was I had a was very excited about my work and I was having trouble concentrating and I couldn't make any sense of it because it studied so much health and medicine and knew what it was not and finally the only thing I could think of that was left was electromagnetic fields and I um I put an SOS out onto the internet to a group of scientists and I said how do I assess this how do I measure what's going on and it turned out that there was a wireless router on the other side of the wall from my bed mm. um, from new neighbors that had moved in a couple months before, and I was being exposed 24-7 because I lived and worked in the same place. But my bed especially was right up against that mm. wall. Um, I was being chronically exposed to this radiation, and it got to the point where it was so bad that I would have to hold on to the wall in the morning. I was so dizzy. And I, wow. I knew I was in serious trouble. And, well, I got to the bottom of it, thank God. But a lot of people aren't getting to the bottom of it. They're going to their doctors. Their doctors are giving them medications to help them right. focus or for depression or right, for sure. hormonal disruption yeah. and so on. Doctors are not, are not aware of this. I mean, how do doctors get educated about this subject? Well, there are two good resources right now in the U.S., one is um, a program that Dr. Dieter Klinghart teaches up in Seattle. It's a prog- he's been teaching um, this subject for, I would say, uh, eight or ten years to physicians. He was well ahead of the curve. 
And then there is also the Institute of Bow Biology and Ecology, where anybody, physician or otherwise, can go and take courses. You can begin online and take the courses to get the foundational information. As well, um, I have recently founded something called the Campaign for Radiation Free Schools. And we, we are about to launch um, next week the uh, a new blog called um, EMF Help Blog. And it is going to walk people through step by step, starting with EMF 101, exactly what these fields are, how to measure them, how to remediate them, what are the different options, and um, do we, because people really need to become empowered in this. Their doctors do not know this information. It's got to be decentralized learning really fast.